Hello, my name is Rocco Williams and I'm from the science department. And today I'm going to go over with you how to do something that we call calendaring or budgeting for instructional days in science. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pull up the scope and sequence for your grade level. I have fifth grade pulled up here. And we look at unit one and I can see that I've got 24 days, instructional days in this unit, but for my concepts and topics, I've really only got 20 days. So then I can dive a little bit deeper and look at exactly what those concepts and topics are. So I've got uh, journaling set up, journal set up and lab safety. That shouldn't take me too long. Uh, I think I'll just budget two days for that. And then I've got three topics left, classifying matter, changes from heat and mixtures. So with the two days for that, uh, from the 20, that means I got 18 days left. What I can do is just divide them evenly and that would be six days each. But really when we think about it, uh, we think about a budget, we think about all of the bills that we have to pay as well, right? So money in and money out, it's the same thing with time. So we've got 20 days, we wanna think about how do we wanna spend those 20 days? And we know that some topics are a little bit heavier and require a little bit more time than others. So uh, that's what we really wanna try and figure out is do we need to divide this time evenly or does uh, one topic need a little bit longer than the other? And the way that we want to figure that out is by thinking about you know, through each topic, what's the bill that is the most important? Like with your budget, you've got your rent or your mortgage, that's probably your most important bill. Uh, that's the one you pay the most attention to and uh, make sure that you pay that because that's really important. So for us in science instruction, we're gonna say the most important bill to pay instructionally is your hands-on investigation. What are the kids doing hands-on to really dive into the topic? Uh, and that's the most important thing. We wanna figure that one out first and figure out how many days is that piece gonna take. And then from there, once we know that, everything else is gonna fall into place. Okay, so how can we figure that out? So let's just look at this first topic, classifying matter. So that's TEEK 5.5a. I'm gonna jump into my resource that we have in elementary, which is STEM scopes. And I'm gonna look at the explore section. That's where that hands-on investigation piece comes from. And in the teacher guide, uh, we've got a lot of really great tools from STEM scopes to help us figure that, figure that out, that question of how many days will this take. Uh, the first thing I would probably do is watch the setup video. These are great little videos. They're not very long, and they really do show you all the materials you're going to need and everything you're going to need to do uh, in order to get that investigation done. So I'll start by watching that video, uh, and then I'll scroll down and look at you know, all the materials I'll need to pull and the preparation uh, and then even just the procedures and facilitation. So I can see in this hands-on, in this explore, there are three parts. So let's just say it's gonna take me three days to do just the explore from this topic. I know science teachers have lots of different time allotments. Some have 45, some have 60, some even have 90. That's fantastic, but you know everyone's got their own situation. So I don't know if this would take you exactly three days, but just for, for this video that I'm making, I'll say that this explore would take me three days. Well, if I think about that and I go back to my scope and sequence with uh, three days to do an explore, that's a lot of time. I don't think I could get through all five of the E's uh, with three days of an explore. So I'm probably gonna need more than six days to do classifying matter because that explore, that hands-on piece is really involved. So uh, let's just say uh, I'm gonna take eight days to do classifying matter because I, I can see from, from the Explorer that that's a really involved hands-on piece. So I'm gonna give that one eight days. So with my time remaining, uh, looks like I got about 10 days left. Once again, I can split it and do five and five, or once again, I can go into STEM scopes and look at the Explorer setup video and kind of try to determine maybe one of these needs a little bit more time than the other. And just based on my prior experience and knowledge as an educator, I know that mixtures, mixtures and solutions is a pretty in-depth topic as well. So I don't think I wanna do an even five, five split. I think I'll give mixtures six days and I'll do changes from heat four days. So this is how I'm thinking through like, like a budget, right? Um, and using that calendaring idea of, you know, which topics are really involved based on that hands-on investigation piece. Uh, so which one am I gonna need to allot more time to? So that's how I'm gonna use the scope and sequence to kind of figure out how many days I'm gonna spend on each individual topic. The next thing I can do is get even more detailed by actually looking at a calendar. So once again, uh, we know, so first day of school is right here on August 16th. I said I would spend those first two days going over journal setup and safety. So that's great. And I believe I said I was gonna have eight days to do classifying matter. So when we're 
getting even into more detail, uh, we can use this calendar tool to really help us figure out um, what am I doing on each day? Now, this isn't necessarily a lesson plan. This isn't necessarily an IPC. It's really just like a skeletal outline where I'm laying out the five E's just to give myself an idea of, you know, what are the kids going to be engaged with for each day of those eight days? Um, so the, like I said, the first thing we do is we know we go through the 5E process. So my first day is always going to be my engage. And then eight days later, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, nice and even. Uh, so we'll finish with this topic on the 27th and we'll end with an evaluate. Uh, so it's kind of like a, our little sandwich, right? So day one is the engage. Day eight is the evaluate. Now I just have to fill in the middle. So I remember I, I looked at that setup video and I knew that that was a pretty involved uh, explore. I think I said I was going to need three days for it. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. So I was going to do explore part one on that day. Two, and then we'll come back on Monday and do explore part three, okay? And so now I've got three days where I can do the explain and the elaborate. So once again, I've, I've got some, some wiggle room. I just kind of have to figure out what am I gonna, uh, what am I budgeting that time for? So I'll look through the explain. I can see, I know I've got the STEM Scopedia, which is great for the kids to read. Uh, I've got some content connection videos. I can preview those and see if I like those. Uh, once again, remember the point of the explain is to have the students really uh, dive deeper into the content, the explorers to get them hands on and asking questions and really experiencing that content. But the explain is really all, it all gets wrapped up together. And the kids really have a, a deeper understanding of, the, of what they did during the hands on. Uh, we say those two have to go, have to go together, right? Because if they just do the explore, and it's fun hands-on stuff, but there's, they don't get the content. And if, if we skip the explore and we just jump straight to the explain, well, that doesn't really work either because then the kids don't really have a foundation or a basis to do the readings or to watch the videos. They're just doing readings and watching videos and we know that's not really science. So uh, the two most really important steps of this 5V, uh, when we think about budgeting, number one is the explore, what's the hands-on? And the second most important really is that explain because we got to follow up that hands-on piece with that concrete piece, right? Like the readings, the videos, the lectures, the PowerPoints, uh, all that great stuff we did with uh, Google Classroom, like th that stuff is great uh, for the explain portion because we need them to solidify that knowledge. Okay, so I think uh, based on that, I, I like a lot of this stuff. I think I'm going to spend two of those three days on the explain. And then I'll just have one day left to do an elaborate. And the elaborate really is an opportunity for the students to take that knowledge that they've learned throughout this whole process and try to apply it to something new and different. So that's the whole thing is we want them obviously to not just be able to answer a multiple choice paper pencil tests. We want them to take what they've learned and be able to apply it to a new and different situation. That's really the highest level of them knowing. Uh, and then lastly, we'll do that evaluate. Lots of different ways that we can evaluate our students in science. We can do scenario-based things. We've got performance tasks that are, that are in the unit guide. We could use those for an evaluate. They've got rubrics built in. Uh, there's even some, some hands-on evaluation pieces in STEM scopes itself, some writing pieces, CER, lots of opportunities for us to evaluate our students. Um, so that kind of gives me a really strong idea of what my kids are gonna be doing in science. And like I said, this isn't necessarily, this isn't really a lesson plan, obviously, it's very skeletal, but just from like at a glance, I can look at this calendar and I really know what my kids are doing in science for two weeks. Um, and it really didn't take me that long. It just required a little bit of diving into the resources, thinking through the hands-on investigation, and then just kind of plugging in those E's uh, based on, you know, what I thought the kids would need. So uh, this, is, this is how we recommend planning in science goes. Um, it, it really is a, a great tool for you to use and, and look far ahead. Another reason we really like this calendaring tool is because we know interruptions happen, but some of those interruptions are planned, like field trips and assemblies and so, some of those other things as well. So it's really good to use this, um, this calendaring tool because if you know you have like an assembly in one of these days, you'd have to make that decision of, ooh, maybe I don't have two days to spend on the explain. 
uh, maybe, you know, because of this assembly, I need to just spend one day on the explain and then one day on elaborate. So it really gives you that zoomed out look of, of what you're going to be doing for, for a long period of time. So thank you so much. I hope this was helpful and you guys have a wonderful day.